congratulations to both of you on this stunning film, which um, I, I can't wait to revisit because the, the, there's so much in it. Uh, Thank you. I was a child at this time, so it brought back, um, yeah, a lot of memories to me. And one of the things I was just thinking about is just walking through the school and sort of getting homophobic, you know, verbal abuse and then teachers not really saying anything about it because they could mm. or, or yeah. that and so um, and I know that both of you uh spoke with uh people who had been teaching at this time under section 28 so I wondered like to what extent uh you both felt some sort of uh responsibility in in honoring the stories of the people who you spoke to uh both both as a filmmaker and as an actor Rosie. Uh, gosh yes yes I, I remember everything everything changed for me the moment I met Catherine Lee was one of the women we spoke to and then Sarah um and I got the script I loved the character loved the story I was like this is amazing forever as an act thinking all with sort of my actor head and then I got put in touch with Catherine we had this three-hour FaceTime and one of the first things she said to me was I wish I'd been braver and it just, it just made my heart break. And I just could see how emotional she still was about the way she had been. And she says, looking back now and knowing the things, how much has changed now, I just wish I could have broken free from this like invisible shackle. And it was heartbreaking. I just thought, oh my goodness, this is not about me. <laughs> this isn't about me being a really good actor. This is about me telling this story right because it's still so sensitive it's still so fresh and ultimately so much stuff that happens in the film is still so relevant to what happens today so it, it changed everything for me it was very precious mm. I would add to that that um one of the interesting things about telling the story that was inspired by those women's experience is that um at the beginning when we met them, when we met a handful of, of, of women and they shared their experiences with us, they were all um, really excited by the prospect of a film being made uh, about Section 28 and, and specifically about their experiences as, as PE teachers at that time. However, what's interesting is that they, when I, obviously I felt a huge responsibility and, and the first time we shared the scripts um, with them, I, I felt like, I've never felt like, like it was so different from giving the script to the financiers and everything else. I was just, I felt this like real, like awful nerves. And what was interesting was that even, even when they watched the film for the first time, I'm skipping ahead, but, but, but when they watched the film for the first time, they spoke about um, wanting to, the experience of kind of wanting to shake Jean as, as the younger version of themselves and, and, and saying, you know, why can't you just be braver? You know, that thing. And it's, and, and but at the same time, feeling like uh, they wanted to give them a, a hug, the younger version of themselves a hug. And um, and that was, was strange because when we gave them the script for feedback, they were conflicted about, you know, yes, it, they felt like it was a very accurate portrayal of their lives, but at the same time, it was almost like they didn't want to say that because there was so much shame wrapped up in those experiences and their behaviors, even though they had volunteered um, those experiences to us and we put them into the film there was there was also a sort of pushback not pushback but like some kind of thorniness I would say um, on their first kind of in terms of um, some of those experiences and, and and how they feel about their younger selves is is you know that, that, that there's so much guilt and, and and shame wrapped up in that so yeah it was a, it was a really it added such an extra element to, to the whole experience of making the film and and and, and a, a, a positively for sure. But um, I think it's really interesting the way that they responded to not just the script, but then the film itself, um, how there was this kind of like splintered off side of themselves, even as, as, as um, you know, 30 years later, they still had this kind of like dual reaction to to the character and the way the character behaves. And I love what the film explores in that, you know, it's not so much about the legislation, but it's about uh, what that stirs up and emboldens in terms of homophobia and then internalized homophobia. And um, I think one of the ways you kind of explore that is um, the way that we see Jean in these very different environments, like the, 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 the sort of tension and stress of uh, school in like the girls' locker room and um, you know, Jean's sister's house. 
and then those the queer spaces could you could you talk a little bit about um yeah gene existing in those two spaces again perhaps as, you know from the filmmaking standpoint and then um for, as rosie for as performing it yeah i mean the film for me was always the sort of character study um that that hinged upon the the, the movement of that character between those spaces so how she behaves and how she feels and what kind of levels of anxiety she's going through in the different spaces was always kind of um, that was how when I worked with my script editor who, who was um, in Paris, we would go I mean, the producer and I would go over to Paris and talk to the script editor instead of kind of talking about the script in terms of acts or like, I don't know, turning points or whatever. We spoke about it in terms of these sort of locations and we had this big whiteboard and we would draw the locations out and it was kind of like, you know, the, what happens to her and the way she behaves is very much location based. And so there was, that was a huge part of um building the visual language for the film the color palettes of the film not the 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 spaces are not designed to kind of um exist in and of themselves they're all they're designed to kind of be in dialogue with each other in terms of um color palettes and um and 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 in terms of the the relationship between the characters and um and yeah it was a huge part of my conversations with uh rosie as well um in terms of what gene is going through in those different spaces and you know um we tried to do everything we could to kind of populate the spaces with um you know uh to make them feel you know uh, uh lived in and to make them feel i mean most people would kind of bring a lot of baggage anyway to the, the the sports hall let's say or the locker room everybody had their own kind of historical um feelings around those spaces that they brought to them but um but yeah that that's that for me that's what the story is about is 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 that character kind of moving between those spaces and, and studying um how she how she behaves um yeah and then they're complicated with like the arrival of lois uh, or the arrival of jean's sister and then that suddenly yeah yeah exactly like what yes. happens when somebody in because at the beginning the idea was always at the beginning she's kind of spinning a lot of plates and she's she's sort of succeeding and her life is kind of ticking along and then what happens when something tips and you know what happens when somebody from the school environment um penetrates that safe space of the bar or what happens when her sister comes over when she's there with her with her girlfriend um and and they sort of carefully curated um sectioned off parts of her life begin to kind of merge into each other and then she's unable to kind of keep up the pretense was there anything you we were very lucky to, i was just going to say we were very lucky to shoot by location i think that really helped that because that was obviously a huge part was these different masks that she would wear and our first location was jean's house we did everything in jean's house so it was a really nice way to sort of settle into the way she likes things and she's very particular in her green dressing gown uh i think as we kept moving through the shoot there were different areas of her life that really surprised me and different parts of jeans would come out um like being with viv i sort of thought obviously there are moments of her being very guarded and pulling back and ultimately that's the thing that breaks them but there was this sort of beautiful freedom we found that she only had with Viv that she almost didn't have when she was by herself, which really surprised me and wasn't sort of the obvious answer. And it was the same when she was at school teaching, when it was just her and the kids without anyone watching. She also, there was a different sort of element of her personality too. I always felt like she was kind of like a teenage boy, Jean, in the way that she moved and the way that she wanted to live her life. And, and it was like in those two little pockets of her life that's where she found her most freedom which I actually wasn't expecting until we did it in situ yeah and quite a lot's tied up in the hair I mean I love the way we start the uh, you start the film with, with with the hair and um and talking about um uh Viv one of my, one of my favorite sequences is actually the motorcycle ride and kind of makes me say, I like Grease too and uh, so it's sort of like almost like a queer version of that motorcycle <laughs> ride which, like, you know I dreamed of as a kid to see a queer version of that so this is beautiful oh. frolicking on the beach and then fish and chips you know <laughs> um and it's such a nice yes. counterbalance to all the heteronormativity that is being, you know the propaganda that is being yeah. <laughs> which they say that we create but yeah is, is being yeah. um you know, forced on Jean with Blind Date, which, you know, was my favourite show, I think. When I, was, I know. Uh, but that's the thing. She's still digesting it. She still enjoys it. 
that's what's so it, it's everywhere you look even the things you want to enjoy you're bombarded with heteronormativity and like normal family whatever that's supposed to mean like that goes into your psyche you're enjoying it without your sort of blinkers up that's the stuff that entrenches in you and causes trauma yeah yeah anything you wanted to say yeah. about the, the motorcycle um uh, yeah i well <laughs> it, it's um interesting no one's actually mentioned that um I, i've not been asked about the mo motorcycle sequence and the first thing that comes to mind is that we moved that sequence around that was one of the only sequences that i think moved from its place in the script to somewhere else and we moved it i think much sooner um and what we decided in the edit was that um even though there was an argument to say we hadn't necessarily earned that moment yet between those characters. There was something really poignant about setting up their relationship as it could be, you know, the future that they should be having in that very kind of dreamy sequence of them on the motorbike and running into the sea. Um, and and then from that point onwards, I, I mean, straight after that, they're in the they're having fish and chips and they're listening to thing about section twenty eight on the radio and. Um, from that point onwards, everything starts to really unravel for Jean. And so, yeah, we moved it there because it just felt like uh, a marker of, you know, what her future could have looked like, um, but that was taken away, I guess. Um, so yeah, I, I find, always find that sequence really sad, but. <laughs> yeah. Didn't they say that um, when we were filming, I remember you telling me that the, one of your notes was that that, that scene was gonna end up on the cutting room floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, over and no, over, I got told that. Yeah. And so they kept on yeah. telling you, and then we almost weren't going to film it, and then we yeah. had to just get that out. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was told to cut it many times. Quite happy that it's still there. Yes, <laughs> yeah. well, me too. Well, there's there's so much more that we could say, but I would just you know encourage everyone to go and watch Blue Jean, um, and um, they'll have their own conversations after it, I'm sure. So, yeah, Rosie, enjoy. Thank you so, so much. much. Thank oh, you. thank you, James. Nice to meet you. Thank you.